So it seems that some of the issues that were mentioned about the hardline beta are already being acted on by the developers. A blog post released yesterday by the Battlefield blog suggests 10 things already that are in the mindsets of the developers that they really want to fix. We're going to go through a few of those today, probably all of them, and just touch on all of them because they're not massive issues. They're, well, they don't take a lot of explaining to really work out what most of these things are. So starting off with number one is the player movement. The developers at Visceral are going to be speeding up the player movement by 10% and then further increasing that by another 10% if you're running with a pistol out. So all in all, if you run with your sidearm, you're going to be running 20% faster than the speed that you experienced in the beta. Now I think we can all agree that that was just so slow. I, I think I mentioned it was like running around with concrete blocks on your feet. I mentioned it in my Good, Bad and the Ugly video as one of the things that I really wanted to see tweaked. And I'm really glad that this was number one on their list because it infuriated me that I couldn't run any faster. It didn't look like I ran any faster so it's really good to see that number two is suppression now we're no stranger to debates about suppression in the battlefield community and we knew there was going to be another one within hardline there were a lot of negative comments about the way the camera jerked about in the beta when suppression was actually occurring on the player so the visceral developers have changed that your aim point will now no longer change and it will only be a situational awareness change now it doesn't actually detail what that change is going to be, but I gather it's going to be very similar to what we have in Battlefield 4 now, which is just more a blurring of the screen and a change in vision rather than it throwing your aim off completely. I didn't think that was really very fair. I didn't touch on it a huge amount in my Good, Bad and Ugly video, only because I played with the sniper so much that I never really noticed it all that much. Number three, the survivalist perk for the operator class within Hardline. This is basically where you can inject yourself and bring yourself back to life. It was extremely overpowered in the beta. You could use it once per life until you were killed a second time, but it would revive you all the way back up to 100% health and you can just get up and carry on as if you hadn't even died. So the devs have heard our cries to take that away from the game completely. They haven't taken it away, but what they've done is nerfed it into oblivion. Basically now, you can use it, but it will only revive you to 1% health instead of 100%, and it will auto-inject you, rather than allowing the player to inject themselves at any point in time in the kill cam, the game now decides a 5 second limit. So whatever the situation might be that you're in, there could be an armoured truck right next to you, you could be in the middle of nowhere, but the game will auto-revive you after 5 seconds, so you're going to have to be aware for what's going on around you. So if you were to be revived in the middle of a gunfight, chances are with 1% health you're going to die straight away. But you might get lucky, maybe be able to drop a med pack and carry on the gunfight. I think a lot of people were just really annoyed that they got a kill, people would get up and shoot them in the back. And I thought that was a really bad thing as well. So the fact that it's been nerfed down to 1% is a nice change. Number four, screen shake. This is something that I requested back at San Francisco when I played the game before the beta came out. And it's good to see that they're going to be implementing that after the game. They're going to seriously reduce the amount of screen shake when that crane comes down. That's a really good change because it's really annoying when I get thrown off my target. I don't mind a bit of screen shake for a little bit of realism here and there uh, when a grenade goes off, for example. But when that crane came down, there was just so goddamn much of it that I just completely lost my target. Number five is the stair bug on high tension. This is basically where players were getting sucked towards one of the walls when you'd run up the stairs. That was noted by the devs on the first day, I believe, and it was even noted by us when we played it at San Francisco. So it's good to know that that's been fixed. Number six is elevated objectives. Basically, if the objective is above or below you, a lot of people apparently were having problems knowing where that objective was. So they've put a little bit more signposting in the game so you know where you're going. Number seven, and one that I didn't actually think would appear in the list, but it, but it has, special vehicles. Basically, a lot of people asked for more different types of vehicles to be scattered around the map for us to use. A lot of you might remember on the high tension map, we had this oil tanker that we could use, which was really cool. If you shot an RPG at it, it would blow up and kill everyone around the outside of it. It was just a really cool vehicle. So Visceral are looking at working in some other vehicles into that map as well, and making sure there are more of them for us to use. 
Number eight is vehicles getting stuck on things. Much like boats got stuck on the shore in Battlefield 4, Visceral are looking to implement the same system with the knife where you can knife the vehicle away from something so it doesn't get stuck anymore. I know it's kind of a weird solution, but pretty much in a game, if it gets stuck, it should get stuck. But at the same time, it would be nice to be able to free your vehicle again, so it's good to see they're looking to implement that. Number nine is different points of damage for heavy vehicles. So the big heavy armoured vehicles on high tension all took the same damage regardless of where you actually hit the vehicle with an explosive. So if you shot it with an RPG in the back or the front, you'd do the same amount of damage. They're looking to implement the same system as Battlefield 4, where if you shoot it in the back, you're going to do more damage to the vehicle, which just makes sense. So they're looking to do that, which is quite cool. And for number 10, which is just a small change, they're looking to add the bag carrier icon onto the list of people that sit in a vehicle so you can tell if the objective player, who, who has the objective, is actually in the vehicle with you. So you know if you need to properly play the objective and get the person to that point or whether you can just carry on buggering around in that vehicle that you've got hold of. So those are the 10 changes so far that we're aware of. It's really good to see Visceral being nice and open in the changes that they're implementing. I have to say that's something that they've shown from the start. The fact they invited about 30 or 40 YouTubers out to San Francisco to play the game before they released it publicly was a big step. So it's good to see them carrying that on with Hardline. And there is a note at the bottom of the blog basically saying this isn't the last time they're going to be sharing information for us. They're going to be doing it all the way up to launch so they can see, or we can see, exactly what they're doing with development, which is a really nice step. I think they've got a real idea in their heads. They want to make sure that this game is as community focused as it can be, and I think they're on a great path here. But that's about it, guys. So I just wanted to keep you updated with all the Battlefield Hardline news today, but thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit like so other people can see the information. And leave a comment down below about all of the changes. I'll leave a link in the description to the blog too. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.